facts without fear. So far, over 7,600 ventilators have been distributed now nationwide. It is going to the areas that need it most. The federal government has also devoted a tremendous amount of resources to the state of California. L.A. is now facing a crisis of its own as the city Skid Row has now confirmed their first case of coronavirus. This is a huge potential problem out in California as officials rightly worrying that that virus could rip through L.A.'s enormous homeless population. I lived in Southern California for five years. It's very large population. Meanwhile, with vital medical equipment running low nationwide, the FBI, look at this, they seized nearly 200,000 N95 masks, 598,000 medical grade gloves, 130,000 surgical masks from people hoarding the supplies. Now, sadly, small percentage, we see the worst in people. This comes as the very first wave of N95 mask imports from all over the world is finally reaching the U.S. Now, these are the first major shipments since February. And this, by the way, brings us to facts that should concern every America tonight. You need to know it to protect yourself and your family. Multiple breaking news reports on many fronts. Tonight, the very first time, we now see more than 1,000 Americans have lost their lives to this pandemic in one 24-hour span. So far, close to 6,000 Americans have passed away from this virus. That includes over 2,000 New Yorkers, and we have to stop. Imagine how much worse this would have been if we didn't have the travel ban 10 days after the first known case in the United States and the following quarantine and subsequent travel bans. Today, the Pentagon confirmed they are looking to purchase 100,000 body bags. The CDC is now reporting that those infected with coronavirus can spread the illness for one to three days before showing any symptoms. I was talking about this very early. I have that on Hannity.com if you want to see it. And one preliminary study found that the virus has the potential to travel through the air. Well, Dr. Oz will weigh in on that tonight and part of our medical information for your family. And another study found a small group of coronavirus patients exhibiting neurological symptoms. Fallout from the virus is now delivering a serious blow to the economy as well. Predictable, still hard to hear. Last week, 6.6 .6 million Americans filed for unemployment, all-time record. Over the past two weeks, more than 10 million Americans have filed for unemployment. Not surprising, but it's hard. Not every industry is struggling, however. Alcohol sales went up by 50%. I don't blame any of you. Uh, now let's get to the good news tonight, some hope that brings us hope. And that is a lot to cover there. In a time of crisis, it is amazing because you see the best of America, which is the overwhelming majority of Americans, shining through brighter than ever. Doctors, nurses, scientists, researchers, medical professionals, janitors in hospitals, everyone in the medical field, heroic work. They deserve our thanks tonight. And the supplies they so desperately need. To that end, we have New England Patriots owner, our friend Robert Kraft. He just used the team plane to import 1.2 million N95 masks from China to the United States. Arnold Schwarzenegger, well, he deserves to be congratulated tonight. $1 million in masks and other gear to hospital workers. You know the TV show The Mass Singer? Well, and Fox, they donated 10,000 surgical masks to New York hospitals. Dolly Parton donated a million dollars for coronavirus research. Hawaiian Airlines is offering free flights for medical workers. They want to come help those hard-hit areas with COVID-19. My love original recipe, KFC. They are giving away a million pieces of chicken to their franchisees in the hopes that they will distribute it to their local communities. Eastern Airlines, Pennsylvania, they repatriated nearly 6,000 Americans who were stranded abroad. I know for a fact that the State Department has been bringing people back and working around the clock. They've made it happen. Congratulations to Secretary Pompeo and his entire team. Add Brooks Brothers to the list of U.S. companies shifting production to create these desperately needed medical supplies. They're going to manufacture 150,000 masks per day. Now, what we're seeing is the best in America here. The overwhelming numbers of people, 80, 90 percent of Americans doing whatever they can do, they see this unprecedented situation unfolding. They're stepping up. Unfortunately, there's a lot of jackasses in the media mob and the psychopaths in the Democratic Party. Uh, yeah, more concerned with bludgeoning President Trump than actually helping 
in this moment of crisis, in the middle of a national emergency, the media mob actively trying to suppress information that the president of the United States is giving to the American people. One far left media group has actually petitioned the FCC to actually censor the president's daily coronavirus task force pressers. They don't want Americans to see the critical information that they are wanting and needing for their families. And they're not alone either. Take a look, some of the worst. If it were up to me, and it's not, I would stop putting those briefings on live TV. But if he keeps lying like he has been every day on stuff this important, we should, all of us, should stop broadcasting it. Honestly, it's going to cost lives. It's obviously above my pay grade. I don't make the call that we take them or not, but it seems crazy to me that everyone's still taking them when you got the MyPillow guy uh, getting up there talking about reading the Bible. I'm not actually sure, if you want to be honest, that we should carry that live. I think we should run snippets. I think we should do it afterwards and get the pertinent points to the American people because he's never, ever going to tell you the truth. This week, fake news CNN and Roswell Rachel Maddow, thank God it's not up to her. And of course, the state-run Democratic Socialist Party, MSDNC, bowing to pressure from their conspiracy theorist hosts. And frequently, they are cutting away from the president of the United States while he's given important information, giving that to the American people during a national emergency. Pathetic, despicable, but sadly predictable. New York Times encouraging people you should travel to China on February 5th. Oh, that's brilliant. February 1st, uh, Mr. Pimple, are you reading your own newspaper? They're telling their readers at the Washington Post, get a grip, the flu is, you know, way worse than the coronavirus. According to the Boston Globe, oh, the president has blood on his hands. Others bashing yours truly, claiming we have blood on our hands, nothing but a lie. We have reported the facts without fear from day one. Our very first interview with Dr. Fauci was on January 27th. You can see it all on Hannity.com. But of course, we know the media mob is working in conjunction with the Democratic Party. You know, they're one and the same. The same people that have lied for three and a half straight years. Yep, they're still at it. And tonight, the actions from some top Democrats is beyond abhorrent. Here's an example. Remember this guy, the corrupt congenital liar, compromised Adam Schiff? Yeah, right now in the middle of a national emergency, we're still responding. He wants a 9-11 commission-style report on how the president handled the coronavirus uh, issue. Unlike the 9-11 commission report, Schiff's political witch hunt would not investigate the actions of Congress, only Trump. Well, meanwhile, Pelosi has already set up a committee solely committed to oversee the president's response to coronavirus. While he was doing the travel ban, let's see, you guys were impeaching him. How many Democrats, I want every Democrat to answer this question, in retrospect, was the president's travel ban 10 days after the first known case in the U.S., was that the right call, in retrospect? She appointed Democratic Majority Whip James Clyburn to lead the committee. Remember, he's the guy who stated his intention to use the crisis for, quote, to restructure things to fit our vision. Moments ago, the president responded. Let's take a look. This is not the time for politics, endless partisan investigations. Here we go again. Have already done extraordinary damage to our country in recent years. You see what happens. It's a witch hunt after witch hunt after witch hunt. And in the end, the people doing the witch hunt have been losing, and they've been losing by a lot. Conducting these partisan investigations in the middle of a pandemic is a really big waste of vital resources, time, attention. And we want to fight for American lives, not waste time. Even in the middle of a national emergency, a pandemic, Democrats, media mob, they can't stop their compulsion and hatred of Donald Trump beyond disgusting behavior. Remember I was saying all the time, if Donald Trump cured cancer, they'd want to impeach him. Would they have enacted the travel ban? Good question for anybody running for office this coming November in 215 days from today. Can they even admit that it saved countless of Americans from contracting the disease and exponentially, mathematically, from dying? Pelosi is not alone in this destructive behavior. New York Senator Chucky e. Schumer, he can't stop complaining, despite the massive amount of federal assistance. There's never been an effort like this for any one state. The president now directing it all to New York, the epicenter, and it's just not good enough for Schumer. In fact, he sent a letter, uh, he sent the president a letter demanding that 
He appoint a senior military officer to lead the federal government's logistical response. Problem is, Chuck's not paying attention. The president did that a long time ago. Take a look. Senator Schumer wrote a letter today, and he says, you should put a military man in charge. I said, well, Chuck, if you knew a little bit more, we have one of the most highly respected people in the military, the admiral. This is what he does, too, very professionally. And uh, he's in charge, but Chuck didn't know that. President Trudeau doing a travel ban, quarantines, and they were Schumer leading the impeachment. Also sent a letter to Schumer writing, quote, thank you for your Democratic uh, public relations letter and incorrect sound bites, which are wrong in every way. And the president continued, if you spent less time on your ridiculous impeachment hoax and instead focused on helping the people in New York, then the state would not have been so completely unprepared for this invisible enemy. Speaking of which, today the president had some strong words for states like New York. This is an epic fail completely unprepared for any kind of catastrophe. How could that be? Take a look. The states should have been building their stockpile. We have almost 10,000 in our stockpile, and we've been building it, and we've been supplying it. But the states should be building. We're a backup. We're not an ordering clerk. We're a backup. And we've done an unbelievable job. Ideally, those states should have had all this equipment, and I think they will the next time. You know, you heard the case where Thousands of ventilators could have been had at a very inexpensive price three years ago. And a certain state decided not to exercise that right because they wanted to build a road or they wanted to build something else because it's big money. You're talking about, I think it was a billion dollars, but you're talking about a lot of money for something that may never happen. No, it was less than 600000 but they were spending 750 on a solar project that went belly up, $90 million on a light bulb project belly up, another $600 million that went belly up. Now, that brings us to New York Governor Andrew Cuomo, another constant complainer, and Comrade de Blasio, another complainer. Tonight, we have a comprehensive timeline detailing how New York's government failed its citizens in a spectacular fashion, sadly. By the way... New Yorkers pay more per taxes per capita than anywhere else in America. Let's go way back to November of 2015, the report the re president is referring to, the New York State Department of Health, page 30 of that report. During a severe influenza pandemic, there is likely to be a projected shortfall of ventilators, 15,783, rounded off to 16,000, during peak week demand. After reading this report, Cuomo, the governor, purchased zero new ventilators. Zero, not one. Instead, he instructed the commission to figure out ways to ration the existing 2,000 ventilators. That's dereliction of duty, especially when he wasted all of these millions, hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars on projects that all failed. But it gets worse. Flash forward to this year, January 24th, Cuomo was telling his state the coronavirus risk is, is to New York, New Yorkers is low. February 6th, 6th, he said the flu is a much greater risk. March the 1st, he said there's no reason for undue anxiety. The general risk remains low. A few days later, well, he said New York can manage the increasing spread of the virus. That's in March. He just got out of March. He was wrong over and over again. And the worst part is his state was prepared for nothing. Now, number one target for terrorism, and if you have a pandemic of any kind, uh, New York, highest concentration of people, 10 million people in the smallest geographical area. Now, New York's healthcare system is so overwhelmed, get this, cardiac arrest victims whose hearts cannot be restarted at the scene, they're not being taken to the hospital as is usual protocol. New York Post broke that story because of an executive order what? We now know in New York, if you want to take the potentially life-saving treatment we have talked so much about, hydroxychloroquine, you have to go to a hospital in the state of New York to get it. Uh, that's a dumb idea. Governor Cuomo, this is the only state now doing this. Michigan rescinded it. Nevada rescinded it. Rescind the order, Governor. Allow New Yorkers to get the drug if they choose at a pharmacy and stop pushing people that don't need to be in a hospital into the hospital system. Now, without Donald Trump's help, it would have been overrun by this point. And you, of course, taking photo ops at all the hospitals that the president's building for you.